You may be seated. We have gathered this morning for the funeral of Matthew Matt McGahan, who died December 1st at the very young age of 35. It is difficult when we lose someone even in their 70s or 80s or 90s, and it is even more difficult to lose someone so young. And we have come together for this service. Our hope and prayer is that it will bring back memories to you of, of Matt and what he meant to you in your life, and that it will be a comfort to the family and to friends. And we pray also that it will be a time that encourages all of us to think about our relationship with the Lord. So let me ask that we would open this service with a word of prayer. Please bow with me. Father, when we welcome a little child, a little baby boy into the world, we just see all the future for him. And we really just sort of assume and hope and expect that he will live to be you know, late 70s or 80s, maybe even he'll make 90. And we, we never think that he might only have 35 years on this earth. But that was the case for Matt. And Lord, we pray that as scripture is read this morning, it won't just be ancient words from 2,000 years ago, but it will be your voice speaking to our hearts today. And that you will give us guidance and wisdom and comfort from the Bible and from everything that is said, the hymns that are sung in this service today. And we would honor Matt's memory and we would honor you as the one who sent Matt to us. It's in Christ's name that we pray, amen. Now let me invite you to take the white hymnals if you're in any of the pews except the front pew, they're right in front of you. If you're in the front pew on either side, they're below you, underneath your legs. And let me invite you to take the hymnals out. If you're in the choir, I think we have hymnals in most of the seats, right immediately underneath your cushion. You'll see, you'll see hymnals. Matt's father passed away five and a half years ago, and he sang, I'll Fly Away at that service. Some of you, how many of you were here for that, that service? Several of you were here for that service. And so in memory of Matt singing that in his dad's service, we will sing this today. And it might be a hymn you know well, some of you, uh, maybe you don't know this one well, but for Matt, let's all sing it together. If you're able to stand, let me invite you to stand, and I'll ask our choir to stand also, uh, and we will sing together, I'll Fly Away.
be seated. It's my honor to introduce Dr. Ruth Ann Sawyer, the Chief Chaplain at the Hospital in Woodbridge and former Associate Pastor here at Haymarket Baptist Church. Dr. Sawyer, welcome. Good morning. My name is Ruth Ann. I had the privilege of serving as Matt's family deacon from the time that he was 15 years old. I got to know him as a teenager. At a time like this, those of us left behind after the passing of someone special hold tightly to Holy Scripture and to the promises that God grants us in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you're with me. Your rod and staff, they shall comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. We have gathered here together to remember and to celebrate the life of Matt, and we come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. At this moment, may we search our hearts in our pain. May we find <coughs> comfort in sorrow. May we find hope, and in death, may we find our own eternity in this day. You see, life is filled with many unexplainable things, and perhaps such an occasion that we are never more aware of that fact than we are like today when we lose someone that we love. We view death as a curse, even as an enemy, and death, unfortunately, as certain as it is, always seems to catch us unprepared. On November the 30th, we were not prepared for Matt to have not awoken with the morning light, as the beloved childhood prayer says. We are not prepared for the reality of that loss, and some of us here today are still not, and may never will be. I want you to take comfort today knowing that Matt is closer to us now than he ever was here on this temporary earth. He has a very different life now. And as in tune with all of you as he was, he sees you all in a much greater way than he ever could have on this earth. Now, speaking of tunes, I am told that he is quite the musician. Matt's love of rock music prompted this collaboration of death explanations from legendary rock groups, most of which he listened to, saw in person, and or sang himself. So from Pink Floyd, how I wish, how I wish you were here. Green Day says, it's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life. Jimmy Eat World, and if you were with me tonight, I'd sing to you just one more time. Led Zeppelin, there's a feeling I get when I look to the west and my spirit is crying for leaving. Queen, how do you think I'm gonna get along without you when you're gone? Leonard Skinner, if I leave here tomorrow, would you still remember me? Guns and Roses, it's getting dark, too dark to see. Feels like I'm knocking on heaven's door. Norman Greenbaum, when I die and they lay me to rest, gonna go to the place that's the best. ACDC, living easy, living free, season ticket to a one-way ride. Bon Jovi says, your faith was strong, but you needed proof. Lincoln Park, 
the sun will set for you and the shadow of the day will embrace the world in gray. And bread, I will give everything I own just to have you back again. But there's one more song that is more poignant and powerful than anything because Matt sang this himself. And it's almost like he knew. I listened to this the other night and it's like he's singing it to us and you can find it on his Facebook page and you can find it on YouTube and listen to it. It was just a few short years ago and it's titled Keep Me In Your Heart by Warren Zavon. And I want you to close your eyes right now and I want you to listen to these lyrics that he sang himself as Matt is providing you peace right now himself. Shadows are falling and I'm running out of breath. Keep me in your heart for a while. If I leave you, it doesn't mean I love you any less. Keep me in your heart for a while. When you get up in the morning and you see that crazy sun, there's a train leaving nightly called when it's all said and done. Keep me in your heart for a while. Sometimes when you're doing simple things around the house, maybe you'll think of me and smile. You know I'm tied to you like the buttons on your blouse. Keep me in your heart for a while. Hold me in your thoughts. Take me in your dreams. Touch me as I fall into view. And when the winter comes, keep the fires lit and I will be right next to you. You see, we all have an idea of what this day means. The finality and the pain, the joy, the remembrance and the celebration. I think the old saying is wrong, that states you only live once. Because from everything that you all here know about Matt, he lived his life by only dying once. He lived his life every second of every day by being the best son and brother and brother-in-law and uncle and friend that he could possibly be. And I urge you all in this day to take his example, to embrace it and to embody it and to live your lives to the fullest as he did. Remember that how someone died is not nearly as important as how they lived. May his memory live on in your hearts and in your songs. Amen. The family requested that we have an opportunity for family members, but also for friends if they want to share memories of Matt to come forward now and to do that. So if you want to come share, please come on up right here to the pulpit. We have a little door right here near the choir loft, and uh, you're welcome to share your, your memories, your eulogy of, of Matt. Hi, my name is uh, Clay Clayton. I uh, grew up with Matt and his family playing uh, baseball. I remember his dad too, my dad's back there. So it's been a family that's lived with us uh, on the mountain for a very long time. And during the COVID lockdown, uh, that's who I lived with, was, was Kathy and Matt. And even though all the lockdowns, living with Kathy and Matt, oh, it was so much fun. And it was that time too, remember Matt made the band called Lame? And I remember going to shows and people in the audience, they're up there playing and we're all going, Lame! So we always thought that was a great marketing idea, but just spending that time playing music, jamming with them. And then even, it's been years, but being with Matt, I got on CCS and I ordered a skateboard. I started skateboarding again too. So I love that about your son and I love you and your family, Kathy. Thank you. Someone else would like to come and share, please. Come on up. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Trisha. I'm Matthew's cousin, uh, Kathy's niece. Um, and 
I just wanted to share a little bit about um, some of my favorite memories of Matt. Um, I'm also a musician, and Matt and I bonded very much over music. Um, and one of my favorite memories of talking about music with him, um, I'm the youngest in the family, and Matt's the oldest in the family. There's 11 years difference between us. So I remember coming home one Thanksgiving, and the first thing he asked me was if I still liked the Jonas Brothers. Um, <laughs> and I was able to tell him that my taste had matured a bit, and we talked about different types of music. Um, so that's just, it always sticks out in my head of, you know, he was the first one in the family to recognize that I wasn't a little kid anymore. And um, I'm going to miss, um, you know, J we always messaged each other on Instagram about when are we going to come and jam? Um, and my sister, uh, she still has a video of, um, I think it was at least 12 years ago on Thanksgiving. And the video is my father, Tim, um, playing guitar, Matthew playing harmonica, um, Matthew's dad, my uncle Pat, sitting watching football on the couch. Um, and in the background, you can hear Kathy laughing with my mom, and I'm sitting there playing Nintendogs, um, the little baby of the family. So it's just my favorite thing to watch and just kind of hear everyone's voices and remember when all of us were in that little cabin together. Um, and last, just the biggest thing that sticks out in my memory is always wanting to go in Matt's room because I knew I wasn't allowed because uh, he was 11 years older than me. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, the perspective of the oldest of the family to the youngest of the family. He never made me feel like the, the baby. So I'll always appreciate that. Um, and the Jonas Brothers are still awesome. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tyler. Um, uh, gonna try my best to get through this. Hi, Kathy, hey, Nate, Shannon, Holly, everybody, um, all of our friends. Um, Matt loved all of us so much, and um, um, you know, as much as this day sucks, it's still a celebration of his life and a remembrance of him and all the good times that we had. And trust me, me and Matt had a lot of really awesome times. Um, a lot of bad times as well, but you know that that comes with having a brother. You know, and I never had brothers, and Matt was probably one of the closest people in my life that I could say is a brother. And unfortunately, we've lost a lot of them through the years. But I just wanted to uh, share a story of the first time I ever saw or met Matt. Um, I got invited to a THP show in high school, and. Um, I had no idea who these guys were. I went to Manassas. They all were on the other side of town. And um, uh, I had a friend take me to the show. And she was like, you're going to love these guys. You know, I was into certain bands that they all clearly represented in their style of music. And they're playing. And I'm just like, who are these dudes? And I was like, these were the coolest guys I've ever seen in my life. And all I wanted to do was be friends with them. And Matt, in particular, with his stage presence and just his persona, I was just like, who is this guy? And he got done with his set and jumped off the little basement stage thing that they had and went and plopped on a couch and, you know, yes, we were underage, but took a beer and a girl lit a cigarette for him. And I'm just like, this is the coolest guy I have ever seen in my life. And... I was just like, I need to be friends with this guy. And then through manifestation and perfect universe colliding, we ended up meeting months later and we were pretty much bros and best friends from that point on. And um, I love them and I love all you guys. And uh, yeah, I love all you guys. Thank you all for sharing from the heart. I actually want to. Oh, you want to? Yeah, please come ahead. I didn't want to cut anybody else. Please come ahead. <coughs> oh, come uh, my name's Aaron. <sighs> yeah, 
I was so, I grew up, uh, I grew up with Matt on the mountain. And, uh, fuck, that was so hard. <sighs> Sorry. Uh, the thing I like about Matt is that, um, like, we grew up skateboarding together. And part of skateboarding is uh, that you fall a lot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Matt probably fell the hardest of all of us when skating. <laughs> He's a big guy. <laughs> but part of uh, skateboarding is that you get back up, too. You keep trying. And... Uh, so what I loved about Matt is that um, no matter how hard he fell, uh, he would always get back up, and he'd, uh, you know, he'd, he'd always give his best. And uh, whether it was his guitar playing, you know, his singing, or his skateboarding, or whatever, he'd always just give it all, his all, and he'd never, he'd never hold back. He'd never say like, you know, like I'm too scared to do that, or I don't want to do that, or what if, you know, what if I fall, you know, like. I remember my fondest memory I have of him, this moment that just clicked, where I knew I loved this guy, was um, we were in the basement at Chris's, we were writing music, and um, I mean, if you want to call it music, we sucked back then. <laughs> 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 but like, he, he was just, he was on the ground, he was just writing lyrics, like, like, you know, like he just, he had the courage to do whatever the band needed at that time. And um, I'll just never forget his screaming voice, his singing voice, and he just never held back. And, you know, if, um, for those of you who knew Matt, um, I guess if you remember him or there's ever a time where you, you're scared you're going to fall, but you really want to do something, just remember that guy never, he never held back. And uh, I hope I can keep that with me, that feeling with me uh, as long as I'm here. So thank you very much. I'm Chris Cloud. I grew up with Aaron and Matt and skateboarding on the mountain and everything. And uh, Matt was always the guy that like you wanted to have the camera on because he was going to either say something ridiculous or do something ridiculous. <laughs> and I, I wasn't great at skateboarding, so I did a lot of the filming for the group and everything. Uh, so I, I, I caught a lot of those moments on tape and um, always like looking back at them and just seeing how like un un unafraid and goofy he was all the time and just you know loving the moments um one of my favorite uh moments of those was i had this driveway in my house that we would all like just bomb on skateboards uh it's pretty steep and uh we would get you know get to the bottom and had this the, the bottom out was was kind of rough so you'd hit the bottom and get wobbles and get thrown into the street and <laughs> There was trees lining both sides of the road, so you couldn't see if there was cars coming. Um, it's, a, it's a miracle we never got run over. Um, so we're up at the top of the garage, and Matt makes this cup of instant noodles. And he's, he wants to, you know, making a snack or whatever. And, of course, like, he always skateboarded without a shirt. He never had a fucking shirt on. So <laughs> he starts bombing my, my driveway hill um, with this cup of noodles in his hand and gets to the bottom and hits, hits the bottom out and gets speed wobbles and just gets himself thrown into the street and just gets completely thrashed. Like, road rash everywhere, he's bleeding, like, and he just gets up and looks at his empty cup of noodles and looks at me and he goes, no more noodles. <laughs> <laughs> like, he just, he just got wrecked and the only thing he was worried about was he just lost his noodles. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. And, and we used to joke that uh, we could make a page a day calendar of all of the dumb stuff Matt would say. <laughs> we, <laughs> we were uh, looking at this, at this uh, Bull Run Clubhouse to rent for some shows. Oh, no. And uh, I think we were moving some stuff in or out, like some equipment or whatever. And it's got this big linoleum floor. I think it was a hardwood floor. And Matt just looks around and just looks at everybody and goes, man, if you fell on your head in here, it would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
it was just little stuff like that. And like, I remember that like probably once a week. You know? like, <laughs> stuff like that that sticks with you. And he was just such a great dude. We're all going to miss him. So thank you. Thanks to each one of you who shared very much. Um, this, oh, well, you guys keep surprising me. Come on up. Just right, right here is the door. Right in the middle. I'm going to have to read mine because I'm not very good at impromptu statements. But this is, is a note that I drafted when I heard about Matt, his passing. Dear Kathleen, we, Holly, Holly's mother, which is me, and Stephen feel a great sense of loss without Matt, whom we came to love in such a short time. He had a lovely lovely nature and personality. And I want to add that he must have been brought up with wonderful parents because of that. We want you to know that we are holding your family in, the, in our heart and hope that you'll be drawn together with this difficult time Special people touch our lives in the things they say and do and leave us changed long after they've gone. It's their legacy of beauty that lives on. For every joy that passes, something beautiful remains. What we'll miss about most about Matt was his warm, sincere, infectious smile. There are a few honest people sincere, kind, and true on this earth, and it was a pleasure to know him. The world needs more people, people like him, and we are sure heaven will be glad to have him. He had hopes for the future for Holly and Matt, who did many fun things together, like when they dressed up as Cheech and Chong. <laughs> <laughs> And won first place during the Halloween costume, spending a week at the beach in Florida on Holly's winnings that she got on entering another contest. She's the luckiest person I've ever known. She also won a car for me that I drove for 20 years. <laughs> and spending, uh, let's see, going, <laughs> going to clubs and other things. We enjoyed having them over for dinner on several occasions, playing dominoes and taking them to dinner. They had a very special bond together. I hope it helps to think of your son as being in the cradle of God's love. In time, he will heal your pain. We hope that the loving support of family and friends with your faith in God will help you through this difficult time. Our deepest sympathies are with you. Thank you. Second scripture for this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. At uh, near the end of his life, Jesus went to Jerusalem, and at first the crowds acclaimed him as possibly the Messiah. Lots of people excited about him, but there were also powerful forces arraigned against him. And toward the end of the week, his disciples realized that things were getting pretty dicey, and they began to become very nervous. He even thought about the possibility that some of them might die. And so in John 14, Jesus said this to them, the Last Supper, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? 
And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas, one of the disciples, said to him, Lord, we, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Life expectancy for American men is 77 years, but the way averages work, some of us live to be 90, and then some of us die young. We never really expect that. I certainly didn't expect it for, for Matt. To have a friend die so young is just a, a shock for all of us and for the family and for friends. One thing a funeral should do is to express thankfulness for what God gave to us in, in Matt. And you have done that better than I can. And I thank you for it. Uh, I'm told he was born at Fairfax Hospital on April 14th, 1988. Kathy would know, she was there. <laughs> he was raised in Haymarket, big brother to Nathan. I'm told there was some sibling, sibling rivalry that I, I won't go over details of that but it recalls my own rivalry with my brother, Kent. And uh, some of those things are best just left between brothers, you know. We'll leave that alone. As a boy, he was a good athlete. It did not surprise me to learn that because uh, I was, I played on the middle school basketball team at my home church, Columbia Baptist, with, uh, with Matt's uh, Uncle Scott. And he was a very good athlete. So I sort of figured it runs in the family. And he, he played baseball as a catcher in baseball. He played soccer. He came to church. Ruth Ann was the family deacon. And then took up skateboarding at age 13. I tried skateboarding way back in the 70s, 60s, actually. And much more dangerous back then. But skateboarding is just dangerous anyway. Because, you, you know, when you fall, it's, it's pretty hard. I'm told he went to Lighthouse Christian Academy for a couple years and then Stonewall Jackson High School. After high school, he worked as a chef for a while at Heritage Hunt. I'm told he made a delicious beef wellington, and I'm sad that I didn't get to try that. He worked later as a chef in Richmond. You've already heard about how he loved music and loved the guitar, and that's why we have the guitar here in his memory, and to sing and open mic nights. And I remember his, his dad's funeral, him singing I'll Fly Away. I wish he was here today to sing it. Most recently, he became an electrician's apprentice and then graduated in June as a journeyman electrician. And I think he was very proud of that accomplishment. When we come to the end of someone's life, it makes us think about the purpose of life. Why does God put us here? Jesus was asked once about the most important commandments because the Old Testament's got a lot of commandments. And so people just try to you know, narrow it down a little bit. And Jesus said, the most important one is to learn to love God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And then Jesus said, and the second one is like it, to learn to love your neighbor as yourself. These are the two reasons that God put each and every one of you here, to learn to love him, your creator, and to learn to love all these people around you who are not perfect. If they were perfect, it'd be easy to love them, but they're not. And learning to love them is the, the reason that you were placed here. Each one of us was placed here. You know, Jesus' disciples followed him, but they were human. And when things began to get pretty rough and it, it became apparent to them that there were powerful forces arraigned against Jesus and things might turn out badly this week, instead of turning out great. They, they expressed their nervousness to him, and that's when Jesus said these words of comfort. He said, I'm, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I, I believe with all my heart that that is what Jesus Christ came to do, to teach us what life was about, about learning to love God and love others, the people around us, even those who treat us badly, to learn to love them as well. And then Jesus gave us an assurance to say, if you will follow me, I have gone to prepare a place for you. 
And so whether you live 35 years or 77 years or if you make it to 100, that's just a drop in the bucket over what I've got planned because the Lord has eternal life planned for each and every one of you. He wants that relationship with you. And it's not because of all of our great accomplishments that we get that. The Bible teaches us that Jesus Christ died on the cross, that we might be forgiven of our sins because each and every one of us falls short. Now, some come pretty close, Mother Teresa, Billy Graham, but even they fell short in some ways and needed to be forgiven. Others of us fall quite a bit shorter of God's goal than those two did. But Jesus Christ even took a man who was being executed for some terrible crime, a thief on the cross. And when he turned to Jesus and said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, also hanging on the cross, looked at that man despite his failings and said, today you'll be with me in paradise. That is the promise that Jesus Christ offers to each and every one of us. And there was a, a man who came to understand that, not because he was such a devout Christian, actually, a, in a lot of ways, a pretty awful man, a man named John Newton. He, uh, he was a talented, smart guy, but he, uh, he lived in England in the mid-1700s, and his dad was a sea, sea captain, and so he became a sea captain. And then, and then discovered that you could make a lot more money as a sea captain if you took your ship to Africa and bought slaves and took them to the New World and sold them for a huge profit, each and every one of them, except the ones you had to toss overboard when they died. It's a pretty brutal trade, but it's very lucrative. You can make a lot of money. You can go from lower middle class to a wealthy man pretty quick. And John Newton did that. And then he came to know Jesus Christ. And he realized eventually that it's not just adding some prayers to the life I'm living. It's not just reading the Bible a little bit or even going to church regularly, although those are good things. The Lord really wants me to turn my life over to him and say, what do you want me to do with this life? And the Lord said, I don't want you to be a slave ship captain. And the Lord called him to be a minister. And then he thought about all the horrible things he had done and how he could possibly be forgiven for all of that. And his conclusion was, I'm a great sinner but Jesus Christ is a great savior. And he let himself be transformed by what Jesus did for him. And he sort of summed it all up with a song that he wrote. It's probably the most famous hymn in the world today. It's Amazing Grace. And I'd like to end this service with this hymn. So if you would take that hymnal out again and turn to hymn number 104. And I know everybody's not used to singing hymns. So John, we're just going to sing the first and the last verses of hymn 104. But if you're able to stand, let me invite you to stand and we'll sing Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. Kindly wait until the ushers come and dismiss each row, each pew in turn. Uh, 
Uh, that way we can have some sort of organization as we, and you're all invited to the fellowship hall. We have a lot of food there. You can speak to the family, you can have some lunch, and we would be honored for you to join us there. But let's, uh, let's close in prayer, and I'll also give thanks for the food that we're about to share. So please bow with me. Father, we give you thanks for Matt McGahan. We thank you for his life, for all of his friends who are here. This, this crowd is a testimony today for the lives that he touched, and we're thankful for it. Father, we entrust him to you now, and we pray that you would bring comfort to his family and to his friends and to all of us who are touched by his life. We thank you also for those who prepared the food that we're going to share. Let this be a time of fellowship in memory of Matt. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ruthann, if you would lead the family.